How are you, buddy? How you doing? Can I have a kiss? Can I have a kiss? Nope. For those of you who aren't aware, this is my dog, Bandit. There we go. Yeah, show me some love. Uh, he's a mixed breed, so a mutt. Really nice little dog, though. He's great. And uh, he's one of the reasons why I'm doing half as well as I am. Uh, gives me something to do. Take him for walks, make sure I get some movement in. Even though it hurts my body, hey, it's good to have a pet around. Anyhow, Bandit loves to sit on my lap when I'm getting ready to set up these reviews. So let's take a look at this knife today. This is the Reich P155W. It also comes in the P155B as in black. It's a desert tan, they call it. We've got a nice uh, Persian style blade and a nice sort of organic rounded handle. I really, really like this knife. This is new for the end of 2018. And uh, I think you should be interested in this knife. If you are not aware of this knife, let me tell you about it. So the review is coming at you right now. And you gotta go on the floor. See you later, buddy. What we have is a full-size folder. Uh, and, of course, you can see the blade shape. You saw it on the thumbnail as well. Let me go over just the basics of it. First off, the blade steel is uh, Rake's Perennial 14C28N by Sandvik. Very good steel choice. For the price range that this knife is, you don't see 14C28 at this price very often. And that's a really good thing for Rake. Uh, you see on their knives, they put a serial number right on the knife itself on the blade. Some people really like that idea. That's pretty cool. You can register your knife and start your warranty and they come with a very good warranty. I'll put a link to the warranty page on uh, the Rate Canada's website uh, so you can check that out. Great, excellent warranty on these. What we've got is a sort of Persian style blade but not so long that it's like a long thin kind of thing but we've got a swedge across the top and the Ricasso turns into a flat up here. And then we've got a high flat grind. Uh, Rake is calling this a flat grind. Uh, technically, I guess it's a saber grind or a high saber grind. Just as long as you know that this is a flat and not a uh, hollow grind in here. You've got a big sharpener's choil in here. It's actually big enough that you can use the tip of your finger. You know, if you're going to do some more precise work, you know, get some your fingers back here like this maybe. If you're wanting to do some delicate work or even some harder work, you know, wrap your fingers all the way around. So that can work. Or of course you can put your hands all the way behind. Really nice little upswept edge here for your thumb to sit in and get a really secure hold. And uh, there's a little bit of a space here uh, with the backspacer. They could have brought the backspacer up a little bit further, but they wanted a little spot there for the meat of your thumb to sink into and get a better grip. So that's a good thing. I do like full backspacer knives. I like part backspacer knives. I like open pillar design as well. But lately, in 2018, I've been really, really enjoying backspacer knives way more than I ever have in the past. And this guy's got a full big G10 backspacer. We've got a, a hollow pivot and a hollow body screw back here. Uh, you use an Allen key to open those up if you want to, if you need to adjust the pivot or if you want to take the knife apart. And I'll take it apart and show you the pictures of the skeletonizing. Let's do that right now so you can see everything in there. You will notice that there's this lock right here. They call this a thumb up safety lock. And I've explained how that lock works in other rake videos. And um, I'll put a link to one of those videos that has a, a full explanation down below in the description area. To get there, you click down here. If you're on a cell phone, click on the little black uh, triangle arrow that's down just below here. Or if you're on a computer, then just down below here above the first comment, it'll say show more and you click on that. Sorry that I have to repeat that on every video, but there's so many guys that are new to, uh, you know, 
either my channel or stuff, or they just don't know about the description section below the videos. Some reviewers, some video makers never use that section. I use it extensively and that's where all my links are hiding. Not really hiding, it's the only place I could put them. We've got a nice pocket clip here. It's a right side pocket clip only. And I'll talk about that in a little more detail. Very functional. Uh, G10 that's milled on the sides. Um, I'll give a, a drawing of a side view like this of how it's milled so that you can see how that is. I'll give you that picture right now. Very, very nice. I really, really like it. All the edges are slightly chamfered. These inside edges of the steel on the liners. They're not sharp at all. This is 420 uh, stainless steel that they used for the liners. I already said what's on the blade there. And um, that's good. In the edge of the G10 here is just slightly rounded. I'd like it to be a little more rounded, but you can always round it off more by yourself at home with some sandpaper, but you can't make it sharper again unless you take off more material. So that's a good compromise right there with the materials. And you know, it's just a very, very comfortable knife. Uh, a reverse grip feels really, really good. And of course, you can use that in a stabbing motion or in a forward motion like this as a slicing cut. This knife slices tremendously well, uh, even just as a food prep knife, if you wanted to use it that way. Uh, do a little pinch grip and you can cut all kinds of things or, you know, cutting down onto a cutting board. Uh, either all the way back here with a grip or, you know, sneaking up all kinds of ways. Um, you can, you know, do a lot of good cutting with that. Uh, delicate cutting, slicing, you know, with your finger up along the spine of the blade. Very, very nice. It doesn't get hot in the hand and it's really, really comfortable to use. Let's do all the uh, dimensions and everything. Let's zoom in on this thing a little bit. So the dimensions for this... The cutting edge is 8.93 centimeters, which is 3.52 inches. Blade length is just a bit more, so the end of the G10 to the tip. Mine is 9.1 centimeters, that's 3.58 inches. The blade thickness, just a tiny bit less than the specs, 3.45 millimeters, which is 0.128 inches. And by the way, rake knives, the specs that they have on their website are very very accurate, better than most knives uh, manufacturers' websites are. Uh, your actual sizes are very, very close to what they claim that they are. I hate when so many manufacturers have terrible sizes compared to what you really get, and it happens way more than you think, which is why reviewers that don't do their own measuring might not be giving you the actual sizes of what you're going to be getting. It happens a lot. Uh, blade depth. That's this way, right here at the thickest spot or deepest spot, 3.5 centimeters, 1.38 inches. The uh, thickness of the edge, the steel just behind that final grind is 0.56 millimeters, which is 0 0.022 inches. So ever so slightly thicker there than I like it to be, but not bad at all. The uh, grind angle, uh, here, yeah, this is the show side. This side was 19.6 degrees. And this side is 17.5 degrees. So very close to the 20 degrees that is normal for the industry for EDC knives. Handle time. Handle length is 12 point, what did I write down there? It's hard to read my writing. I can't see if I wrote down 12.4 or 12.9. I'll double check it and it'll be correct on the screen. That equals 4.84 inches. Uh, the grip area, so between my thumbs there, 9.7 centimeters, 3.82 inches. It's a big grip area on this knife. The handle thickness is 1.46 centimeters. That's 0.575 inches, so just over half an inch thick. Uh, the handle depth is biggest, I think it's right here, 2.68 centimeters, 1.06 inches. And then the depth of the knife when it's closed it's actually biggest right there, 3.7 centimeters, 1.46 inches. The total length of this knife with the blade deployed is 21.3 centimeters, which is 8.39 inches. This one weighs 146 grams, 
which is 5.15 ounces. So basically you've got a five ounce knife, you've got a three and a half inch blade with a uh, four and three quarter inch handle. Pretty good proportions. Uh, the balance point of the knife is, whoop, it wants to fall down this way, so well that's fine, that still gives you a balance point. Your balance point is right there where your finger choil is. So a perfect balance point. I like that a lot. Uh, the fit and finish is really good on this. Um, the unique finish, it is kind of unique. It, it's got sort of this, like I said in the opening in the intro, this is sort of an organic kind of rounded shape, which is really nice. Uh, I like it an awful lot. It, it almost looks like a nice wooden handle kind of shape that somebody made. Feels very comfortable in hand. Uh, really good that way. Um, the 14C28N steel is a really good choice, and uh, Rake keeps making them this way. And at the price point, that's not a bad steel at all. It's a very good steel. You've got a blade that is slicey and stabby, so <laughs> nothing wrong with that. That's a really good build uh, quality there. I already mentioned the uh, hollow pivot screw and tail screw there. That's really good. The pocket clip, it's made for this side only. The G10 is milled out a little bit to have that uh, pocket clip sit right there. They did not mill out the side of the G10 here so that the uh, pocket clip could go on this side. Um, the thumb studs work very well for deploying it. You don't just use the light switch method or the push down method on the flipper tab, but the thumb studs are perfectly positioned for a really fast deployment and it just works wonderfully well. You've got a little less access on the left side, but more than enough, you know, to deploy the blade very easily. So in that sense, it's ambidextrous, which is why I like the thumb clip pocket clip to be ambidextrous as well. So there's a slight chamfer on these edges. As I said before, I'd like it to be a little bit more well-rounded and sandpaper can do that, but G10 is uh, not good for you. So wear a face mask, do it outside with a breeze at your back, pushing the stuff away, whatever you do, protect yourself from breathing in the G10 if you're gonna sand that. They got it well milled out here, unlike some knives that you'll be seeing reviews of and some I've done recently, where it's really hard to get at that liner lock release. This nut is perfect here. It's made just like the shape of your thumb going in this way and pushing over. They made it, instead of just doing a rounded out spot as if your thumb's going in this way, they made it because your thumb is going this way and down. <laughs> They're thinking your thumb is like this and it pushes down that way, whereas some people make their knives so that the thumb is supposed to go in this way. It's like the shape of the cutout. So that makes an awful lot of sense. I really like that. And they added that jimping in here just to make sure you get a good grip on there with your thumb. And it works just as well in the left hand because it goes the same way. Your thumb goes in that spot and pushes over. Great design. Uh, what's the price for this knife? Well, it's $68.95 Canadian, and Rake Canada, who sent me this knife, will ship to the United States as well. You spend $100, and they will give you free shipping to Canada or the United States. So $68.95, so basically $69 Canadian dollars for what you get here is an awesome price. Very, very good indeed. What are the cons? It's not really a con, but I'd like it if this came in more color options than just this or black. I'd really love to see some great color options, maybe some two-tone G10, all kinds of stuff like that that Rake needs to do. Some people do not like this bead blast on the blade. I don't mind it. Uh, it, it works for me. I do prefer stone wash, of course. I've mentioned that many times, but the this subtle bead blasted finish looks good to me as well. 
but I know a lot of people want a different finish than BD Blast. So if they came up with different uh, options for the blade finish as well, that'd be great. Um, and I'm not fond of this lock. This safety lock, I think it's, well, just to be totally honest, I think it's silly. It's not really needed. The liner lock works very well on its own. And sometimes uh, guys accidentally activate that lock and then it's no fun to try to close the knife because you're going, what's going on? Oh yeah, right, I gotta move that. I gotta slide that back so I can unlock the knife now and close it. So don't really like it, but I don't really hate it on here because it's nice and shallow. Like from a side view, you can't see it. So the teeth for that lock are not sticking up proud. So you won't accidentally engage that lock as easily as you would on some uh, older versions of knives that have this kind of lock. So I don't really mind that much, but I don't, I don't really have a use for that lock. Those of you who have a use for that lock, hey, there's a feature that uh, you've got extra. And when you take the knife apart, you can always remove that lock if you want to. You'd have a tiny little hole there, but you'd never engage that lock that way. So totally your choice. Other than that, you've got a really good knife here. I highly recommend this. It uh, feels good, looks good, it works well. Um, I used it for all kinds of cutting. This is from the factory still. So it slices very, very well. Um, I will sharpen it up to, well, since it's at 19.6 on one side and 17 and a half on the other side, I think I'm going to sharpen it to about 18 degrees per side, and that's the least amount of steel to take off. And 14C28N can handle 18 degrees per side, no problem. And, you know, it's a very, very good steel for that. Uh, the cutting edge still goes into paper going straight down, so that's a good thing. You don't often see knives from the factory that will do that, especially after I've done my, you know, cutting of cardboard and I did some wood whittling and I I didn't cut any meat with it though <laughs> and I used it in the kitchen a little bit and it just slices very very well it's a great slicing knife so if you're in the market for something like this uh, for whatever reason if you want a practical knife it's good for that if you just like the looks of it hey it's definitely good for that oh let me show you what it looks like in a pants pocket with this pocket clip I keep forgetting to show that part it fits on there very well it holds nice and snug to you know, the thick seam here that's on jeans that fits in there just perfectly. And that's what you've got sticking out of your pocket, just a little bit. It's a little over a centimeter, just under half an inch sticking out. So that works very, very well. And it's easy to grab it and pull it back out, especially when you're wearing the pants. <laughs> it works much better than this little display model. So there you go, this is, uh, right up there on my list. You probably will see this knife on my best of 2018 review that's coming out in December. Can't believe we're halfway through October already. 2018 is flying by. I think Rake Knives is going to come out with some really good stuff for 2019. I can hardly wait. And uh, this whole channel, I think, is going to have a really good year next year. Thank you for watching this video. Thanks for liking, sharing. Thank you very much for subscribing. I appreciate it that extra much. And uh, thank you to uh, Love Them Knives uh, for the uh, shout out. I really appreciate that. And if you don't know about the shout out from Love Them Knives, I'll give you a link to his video at the very end of this video, right up here in that corner. So thanks for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, everything good that you guys do for me, especially my Patreon supporters. Remember, always, Cut towards your chum, not your thumb.